right now, like I indicated earlier, it's been an eventful year for the education sector of uh, uh, of this country because as you were well aware of government began the implementation of the free SHS policy but we also know that there was a wave of sex scandals across uh, these schools there was also a wave of uh, protest by uh, some students so let's have a, a look at uh, 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 the, a review of the year as far as education especially the SHS uh, part is concerned I've been having this interesting conversation with Dr. Oseya Oduchum who is the Deputy Education Minister we're here to have a conversation looking at education and how far we have come where do we want to go in 2019 we're reviewing what's happened from the perspective of the Ministry of one of the national priorities in fact, it takes a chunk of the national budget. I'm talking about the education sector. I have with me the uh, Deputy Education Minister, Dr. Osei Yao Educhum. And indeed, this year, he's been moving around a lot. He's my guest as we do this review of the educational sector from the ministry's perspective. Doc, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. And I assume that it's been a very good year for you. It has been a great year. Why would you describe it as such? Uh, there has been some um, policies that have been implemented. That to me is, I can characterize it as a, one of the most innovative policies uh, this country has seen in education. Specifically, uh, the double track, which I call the cousin of Free Senior High School. Uh, you know how Free Senior High School, uh, vision of the president, uh, began implementation and given the number of students that wanted to access our secondary education um, the expectation grew the numbers grew and we had to find a different way of accommodating the students okay. ensuring that even within limited uh, spaces that we had everybody could get access then came the double track uh, which of course uh, got some national attention to say the least mm -hmm. Uh, with a, a lot of education of the public and with the support of the media, uh, people began to, began to appreciate, understand. And um, it's been quiet. I haven't been to your studios for some time now. <laughs> and I, when I measure the effectiveness of any uh, program that we implement here by the frequency of visits to Joy, Joy News. <laughs> And it seems that the last two months you've left me alone. Well, we've just had, so, I'm sure we've yeah. just had a lot of other things to and deal with. Yeah, uh, if, uh, if, if other things overshadow any policy that we're implementing, it means we are doing well. But for you, it means because it's going well. You, do, you don't leave things uh, uncovered. Of course we don't. So, That's so why we're back here. That is it. Okay. To have so, the highlights. So, so, so let's, take, <laughs> let's take each of the issues and, and, and break it down further so we can look at the loopholes, and I'm sure you know a lot of them, the loopholes and how uh, it, it was addressed this year, and upon hindsight, what improvement we can see in the coming year, 2019. Let's begin with the free SHS policy. You've given us a summary uh, of what happened this year in the education sector. But free SHS, one question that for me, and I believe for many Ghanaians, has never been answered is funding for the program. A lot of people have said, and in fact, if you look at the political device everybody has said oh we think this is a good idea we think this is a good idea but where are we getting the money from when i hear that this question has not been answered mm -hmm. i say to myself it was answered in the budget was it of course remind us sir. of course because the budget was read by uh the minister for finance and enough money, more than enough money, was allocated for Free Senior High School. More than so, enough so, money? Of course. So when we say the question has not been answered, the question is always answered in the budget statement. And the budget that has been approved by Parliament mm -hmm. gives us enough funding to take care of Free Senior High School. So every year we get a question. How are you going to fund it? Where is the specific? Minister, I minister, think the question that has not been answered is mm -hmm. the specific source. Oh, funding. no, I mean, you remember the president talks about using oil funds and other, any other revenue, and he's doing it. Yes, exactly, so, so, exactly. So, but that's where, that's where, that's where it, be, it gets a bit mm -hmm. vague. That's uh -huh. where it gets a bit... When, uh, when, when, when I, uh, sitting here at the Ministry of Education, present financial requests mm -hmm. 
to the president, of course, through the Minister for Finance. And when the budget is read, the money is there. Why do I have to ask the president, where are you getting the money from? Well, we have because to ask you because the money is not for you. The money the is for us. It's in the budget. So we need to know which part, of us, which part of our money are you taking to do this for us? Okay. And you oh, say all, that, all your all resources that, and other course. resources. We I even mean, heard of donations. I mean, government of Ghana resources are taxpayers' resources. Your tax, mm -hmm. my tax, taxes of the people of this nation mm -hmm. are dedicated to free senior high school. Right. And I want to commend the Minister for Finance for answering the question about funding every year and surprising Ghanaians that this is a vision of the president of the country and it's been done. For the okay, taxpayers so who feel that mm -hmm. they've not had specific answers, if you say mm -hmm. oil resources and we'll get the money from oil resources and other sources of funding. No, and then later you say Ghana. you have from created the and then later you say you have created an account no, for they, people to it, donate. It has not, it, it's something that the minister proposed. It has not happened yet. It hasn't but happened. No. So there is no account where no, people can No, there's no account in. where any individual can send money. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh -huh. What is going on now is that you have corporate bodies that are responding. Tello has just recently announced a ten million dollar fund to support free senior high school. You have a GMPC that is completing 48 buildings. Actually, as I speak with you, they are at the various levels. You go to a Dujama senior high school, uh, the building is now completed. A number of schools, including Kwabinya, a number of places, uh, uh, GMPC's buildings are moving on. Uh, they have actually committed to do another set of buildings across the country. Then you have one important aspect about financing, uh, which is the securitization of get fund revenues. You know, that is a very innovative approach to meeting the needs of uh, infrastructure at the secondary level, uh, at the basic level, at the university level. So you the say what? Se securitization? Sec what, what does that mean? Oh, securitizing. Securitize. Yeah, okay, securitizing well, well, part well, of get fund revenue. In very basic English, what does basic that mean? Basic English, this is what it means. Um, under the regular circumstances that we have in this country, mm -hmm. every year the money that comes from get fund goes to support construction of school buildings. Okay. But there are so many buildings across the country, and what has happened, including the e-blocks, including other facilities across the country, what has happened over the years is that the money that comes in this year is not enough okay. to complete all the buildings. So we finish a bit of it and then move on to the next year. So as I speak with you, if you go to any senior high school, majority of senior high schools, there's an uncompleted get fund building. You go okay. to the universities, there's an uncompleted get fund Which is something that I would like for us to speak about specifically mm -hmm. as, as we go along in our conversation. Mm -hmm. At this point, let's wrap up with the funding. No, I mean, of, infrastructure of the, is a major funding programs. source. Okay. It, it's a major concern in terms of where you need money. So okay. when you talk about $1.5 billion, it's a huge amount of money. Mm. And what has happened, as directed by the president, is that you securitize get fund, take about 40% of the revenue, for over a, about 10 years, use that money, borrow against that money. That's what we mean, securitize. Okay. You borrow against the money, take that money today, complete all the uncompleted buildings so that you have space for students to attend schools that are double track in a single track fashion. So if you look at what has been done, what is being done right now, that is a major way of getting infrastructure done, an innovative way of getting infrastructure done. So instead of waiting for 10 years to get the buildings done, mm -hmm. you complete the building in two years, you pay down your debt in 10 years. Okay, so bottom line is, in individuals and organizations, first of all, you said that there has not been a... a the Voluntary Education Fund that the Minister of Finance Has proposed, not been set up yet. No, it's yet to be set up. So where did the money that the TALO uh, oh, Ghana paid. So, so where, where did that money go to? It's, it's going to go to building school buildings. Mm. GMPs is going. No, to whose account is it going into? Whose account no, is I that mean, money going into? Most of them, they do the buildings direct. All that we need to tell them is that, like uh, GMPC, the money doesn't come to us. They just access where are the places we need to put buildings for you.
Okay, we so you give them, them an list, idea. Okay. And then they do it themselves. But the $10 million that Talo, say, you say Talo has committed, mm -hmm. wh where did they send that money to? Did they bring oh, it to oh, the no, ministry? Of course not. What we are doing with them now is to select the school buildings for them. Select the for Talo? For them, yes. Okay. And then they will award. Their so that money is also going into yeah, infrastructure. Infrastructure. Okay. So oil money. Mm -hmm. How is government getting that money from the oil sector? Of course, we have, royalties, we have different sources of revenue. Is there a uh, specific percentage allocated to education? Actually, at this point, I, all that I'm telling you is this. What I'm excited about mm -hmm. is that the revenue question is answered every year. For me, as a taxpayer, and I believe for many Ghanaians, I, I, I it has not been answered. Do, um, if you want specifics, Let's read the budget. It's in there. I haven't read the specific. I've seen, I've read yeah, the specific, so uh, the education, mm -hmm. I read the education mm -hmm. bit of the budget, and what you're saying is what is there. It doesn't specify. Mm -hmm. It no, doesn't it's specify it's, to, to at all. To be very frank with you, I'm not interested. What I'm interested in is I have money to run our programs at the Ministry of Education. Isn't that and double it's standard? From, and it's coming from the taxpayers of Ghana. But you need so to know to me, where the money is coming of from. Of it's coming from the government treasury. That's what I'm interested in. But specifically in. No, where? I'm, I'm not interested in going to find out, hey, no, because where if do you, you get don't this know, money from? If you what don't know where the money in, is. What, what I'm interested in is that I'm interested in mm. there's money set aside for education. So if that money is always accessible research, to course, you? Of course. Always accessible course. to you? Let me tell you, um, just this morning, we've, we have, we've signed a check, 19 million for buffer stock. The last two weeks, we've released about 45 million CDs to buffer stock. They are paying people right now. I hope they invited Joy News because a lot of news media know. were there at Buffer Stock last week to interview people who are picking up their checks. And some of them were waving the check I in see. the sky and they were very excited. They were very happy because the government, we have money. Free Senior High School has over 100 million right now. We are paying our vendors. So, so when the question comes, where are you going to get money? My answer is that money has been given to the ministry and we are paying contractors. We are okay. paying suppliers. Well, that's a good so, foot. So that's a good foot to stand on to yeah. come hit at you mm -hmm. when we do not see the things that the taxpayer expects to, to see that his or her money is being but used for. But the taxpayer for. is very happy that we are paying contractors. And, and most of and, them. And that's by your own survey? No, not by my survey. Right, because if you no, say, no, no, you no. say it, I, I don't know. I don't know what survey no, no, you've done. But no, no, all that, all that you, I say, you say it with so much confidence. No, of, of course, course, I. Of course, I'm a taxpayer. Are you a taxpayer? I see the excitement in your face as you Excitement in my face. Yes, that's just me. Just me. <laughs> that's just me talking. Yeah, so, that's just how and, I talk. And, and, it doesn't and, mean that I'm excited about how free SHS has gone oh, completely. Let me tell you this. Go and meet a parent whose child, children. None of the children has ever gone to senior high school. And for the first time, one child is going. And, and that is why when I hear about complaints, talk to cocoa farmers. Talk to people who are subsistence farmers, people who are struggling. Talk to the woman on the street who is selling and trying as much as possible to make enough money to take care of the family. I have a woman who just walked out of here, child going to holy child. The excitement that for the first time she has a daughter going to Holy Child, a school that she never dreamt that any of her children can go to because with double track, with open spaces in top performing schools, and people are going in. Talk to them and so, let them tell you if you go to the central market of Kumasi and you interview women whose children have had the opportunity to go to Wesley Girls for the first time. Talk about excitement. I said, that, that's, a excitement. Point that, that's a point that, I mean, nobody disputes, quite frankly. Everybody has said that it's a good thing. The only issue they have is how it has gone. Going into 2019, one of the, one of the uh, suggestions that people have put on board is, and I know that you're, you're, you're vehemently opposed to it because we've heard you speak to it, is um, whether or not this can, could have been targeted. Um, that if people can pay, we should allow them to pay. Yeah, they can pay now. You, in 2019, in, in 2019, I mean, is that an what, option? What is that an option that the education ministry is looking to implement somehow? No, it's not. Okay. And I'll tell you what, why it's not. For 60 years in this country, there was a scholarship in this in part of this nation never targeted. Never targeted. Even the president of the land's children could have literally, if they had kids who were in senior high school, have gone for free. Never targeted. Which which scholarship is this? The Northern Scholarship. 
okay. people of northern extraction. It, it was still to targeted. It never ta it because targeted it was in the, the northern region. North. In the north, in the north, there were people who were wealthy. Did, did we target and But it was them? targeted for the northern region. No, within the north. Did we target it? No. Do you want to tell me that the, everybody the, the in the north? That the, no, do you want to tell me that everybody in the north was the, the categorization uh -huh. that it is a northern uh, scholarship is itself is a target. Was everybody in and the there was north. a reason for that. The reason is that they wanted mm -hmm. people in the, in the northern mm -hmm. region who weren't mm -hmm. uh, going to school uh -huh. to find it attractive so, so you, to you go to, to school. you want to tell me that if somebody was from the north and he was the governor of Bank of Ghana, he needed the money? No, but it was targeted. No, no. It was I'm not targeted. a simple question. No, no it wasn't. There, there was a, no, it there was, was a, a part of the country that has it targeted enough. But we didn't it was the, targeted. But we didn't that region. Bottom line, Do you want it was to, targeted. No, no, gifting. If you talk about targeting, mm -hmm. we're talking about means testing mm -hmm. individually. Yeah. Individually. It, it, in individually, in this case, mm -hmm. that's a region. So, no, so that's one region out of ten. No, no. Individual, not one region. There were three regions, and at a, a certain point, nothing voter was included, nothing B was included. All that I'm saying is that <laughs> individually, it wasn't. People who are wealthy still could have their children going to school. Yeah, I think because you're comparing right different thing, things. It was right. No, it wasn't a different thing. When you talk about means testing, we talk about income of the individual who is, whose child is going to benefit. It was the right thing to do. This country did it through thick or thin, through coup d'etats, through difficult times, dangerous times, economic challenges. This country stood and said, we will continue. So now 2019. We've come, to, we've come to the south. Mm. All that we are saying is this. I act on the instructions of the president. The president of the land says, this is how I want the program implemented. Now, as I said it, and I'll continue to say, if your child is Achimota and you want to pay, write a check for the headmistress. She'll be very grateful. All that we are saying is this. What I hate to have people talk about is when they talk about the fact that those who are going to certain schools, it should be free, right? Uh, and that's why I asked the question. If your child goes to Antoine Senior High School or Jati Pramso Senior High School and they ask you to pay, would you pay? Why you not? See, they won't. You see, people are saying, we'll pay if I can go to Wesley Girls. I'll pay if I can go to Achimota. So if you want to pay and your child is at Jache Pram, so pay. You go there, write a check for the headmaster. Until there's so a change in policy, mm -hmm. um, which will be communicated at the highest level of government, way above me, we are implementing the policy as directed. Does, it sound, to me, time, does it sound to me like there's going to be a change in policy at some not. point? Where I sit, I don't know, and I don't think there will be any change. However, as you have said, if there was a change, it will be communicated by me. I'm a deputy minister. I do the work. I do whatever I'm told to do. I, I can assure you in 2019, there will be no change. So we are in 2019, steam ahead okay. implementing the policy. Very in the well. years to come, I don't see a change. Okay. I see us implementing the policy. And I'm very grateful to the finance minister for always making sure there's money in the budget for the implementation of free senior high school. So uh, we're still having this conversation uh, with Dr. Uh, Oseya Oduchum. Uh, we're talking about free SHS. We're having a review of it from the ministry's perspective and looking into 2019. So what will change in 2019, you were going to tell me, about as far as the free SHS, SHS policy uh, implementation is concerned, is what? Uh, reduction in the number of schools that will be on double track. Okay, well, we, because I that, want us to talk that, about double track separately. Okay. So, so let's finish with the free SHS. Um, some of the schools um, complained about, again, infrastructure. Recently, we did a story from Pina, Mm -hmm. which is uh, somewhere up north. And it was a terrible situation. We, in fact, our correspondent, Rafiq Salam, has filed several stories, mm -hmm. and it goes down to infrastructure. Mm -hmm. In 2019, now that you, we know about the $10 million from Talo, we know about GNPC, what has been done about infrastructure? Uh, as I speak with you, what, what we are working on is that we are doing needs assessment based on how many students we project will go to the school next year. Mm. So uh, this is what you do. You look at how many new students we added this year. So let me make it very simple. If we added 300 more students to, let's say, Achimota or any other school for that matter, 
what you do is that you know that if you added 300 more students, mm -hmm. if you want to get the second year students to go on a single track, which we are projecting, instead of double track in the second year, mm -hmm. I know that I need to put up a six classroom block. Okay. If I put up the six classroom block, I've accommodated the 300 students in terms of infrastructure. Therefore, they will not need to be double track in the second year. Okay. If I'm going to admit the same number of students next year, which is 300 more, mm -hmm. then I need another one-story classroom block. If I get a two-story classroom block for that school, I'll accommodate 600 students. Okay. Therefore, the first year and the second year will not have to be double track. All right. So, so this is how we are working it. So in a school that had 600 more students, I need a 12 classroom block okay. so that the second year will not be double track. So if I understand you properly, now you have an idea of the extra numbers that have come in and based on that you're going to make projections and based on that you're going to make provisions as far as infrastructure is concerned so that in 2019 you will revert to the single track system for some, for, schools. For some schools for some schools so this is what's going to happen for majority of the schools second year will not be double track okay our goal is to make sure second year is not double track for any school okay but first year will continue to be double track. Okay. For some schools, given the infrastructure that we are doing, we may be able to take them off double track completely. So, uh, for example, if a school, as I already said, uh, added 300 more students, mm -hmm. if you want to take double track away from the school completely, uh, for the first two years, you need a classroom block that will take in 600 students. Okay. The following year, you can add, as they get to the third year, you add another a uh, six classroom block and that school will not be double track anymore so there, there are various ways that we are dealing with it so uh, if a school added 300 more like i think kwabinya for example mm. uh, as i speak with you there's a building that being built by um, GMPC, gmpc that will accommodate 300 students since their growth was about 300 students more if the gmpc building is done it means the second year you have the, uh, that number covered, right? And there so, won't be any. Uh, yeah, so the second year, all of them can go together. At the same time. At the same time. So you'll be able, if you add one classroom block to Kwabinya, what you've done is that you have accommodated, the, uh, the, you have made second year single track. Okay. And we are also adding a 12 classroom block at the same school. So next year, uh, when those buildings are completed, you can take them off double track completely because you've accommodated them in terms of the increase in growth from year one, year two, and year three. Okay. So, so we have a clear plan in regards to the 500 million that is coming through from the Get Fund Securitization to take off together with the GMPC buildings to take off a number of our schools from double track and make them single track. So th that is the plan. Okay, just to remove double track from the second year in some schools, because as we speak, we know about 400 schools mm -hmm. are on the double track mm -hmm. uh, system. So how many of these 400 schools are going to experience this? So, so there are two tracks that we are looking at. There are some schools, maybe about 50, that we think we can take them off double track completely. About 50? About 50 may go off double track. Which completely. areas are these? Are they oh, in they Accra? Are throughout, or? throughout the whole country. Uh, throughout mm -hmm. the whole. But majority, uh, well, uh, do we majority, have an idea? Uh, because majority of our schools are in the central region. Okay. Uh, uh, so you could probably see majority coming from there. Uh, but if you look at a school like Accra Girls, they have an uncompleted uh, dormitory block, a huge one that is nearing completion. The moment that building is done, it can accommodate a lot more uh, young women okay. um, in Borden. And then we are adding a classroom block. So Accra Girls is one of the schools in Accra that can get off a uh, double track uh, next year, for example. Okay. So there are a number of schools that are different based on their infrastructure needs. There are different stages. Uh, and Accra Girls is just an example of where the building is almost complete and therefore it puts them in a situation where we can take them off. Okay. So, so it, depends. it depends. It depends on the needs of these schools. And I, I hope that uh, in 2019 we'll have the ministry, for example, publish 
the list once again uh, so that we know which schools have been taking off double track, uh, double track mm -hmm. and so that when we, the media, are tracking, we know how to track. We always take great ideas from you, so that's one of the things I want and, and this this year, I will come, this year, I'll, I'll come, I'll, I'll bring my invoice. You bring it sure all I, the I, yes. consultants. Free consultants. <laughs> I'll bring my invoice and, and make sure that I get my due. Zoom <laughs> in into the schools themselves and look at some issues that have come up. Uh, there are sex scandals, uh, you know, people in authority uh, abusing their power or, or, uh, and things close to that. There is also indiscipline. Let's begin with indiscipline. We've seen a number of schools. The latest being the Timpani School where students will go on rampage and say we want this done and that, that had, in Timpani, for example, it has something to do with politics and um, the student had to go on one page and then they were asked to the school was closed down what really do you think as education ministry and I believe you have done a lot of work since these mm -hmm. issues came up mm -hmm. to understand what is happening mm -hmm. which one do we take first let's then? begin with indiscipline. indiscipline okay I you can see from different angles and, and mm -hmm. different fronts uh, when you talk, I think they went on hunger strike. Uh, right. And, 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 and let me shift yeah. my question. I think I should, it should rather be because it will be a bad on my part to just say the students have been in discipline. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. is, what, what really is it? Is it in discipline on the part of the student or bad leadership in terms of the administration of the education system or the school system specifically? Actually, if we uh, separate the timpani and mm -hmm. just look at generally, generally. Uh, what, what goes on in schools, what I've come to appreciate is that um, in some schools, the doors of communication is wide open. Okay. You see, I, I wouldn't want to characterize students as bad and they just go on rampage, even though I don't like it when they go on rampage. But what I've come to appreciate is when you have a headmaster who has um, uh, communi doors of communication wide open, mm -hmm. invariably you don't see it. You don't see students going on rampage because they feel like they can be heard. A number of times, when children hit a wall, you can see them going on rampage. It doesn't mean that they are uh, under certain circumstances, maybe some people inside them, mm. and those things happen. But a number of schools that have visited after uh, there's a, a rampage or there's a demonstration, when you talk to people, you begin to get a sense that the doors were not wide open enough. For communication. For communication. And mm. sometimes... The, some adults in the school can also take advantage of that and do something thinking that they are revolting against the headmaster of the school. And then you see all Internal this politics play Internal a role. Internal politics play a role where okay. a headmaster may not be popular. Maybe teachers don't like the way the headmaster talks to them. They use the students as a proxy. And then when something happens, they hide behind and get the students on rampage. Um, I will say uh, uh, that what we need to do more it's also provide counseling opportunities so that the students will know that there's somebody that they can talk to hmm. when things are not going well. Those are things that are already, um, I mean, I remember when I went to senior high school that there was a counselor that you could go to talk to if you needed someone to talk I mean, to. I mean, they are there. There are some places where they are not there enough in terms of, well, well, my, in terms my of when school. they teach and counsel at the same time when there is an emergency and a counselor in the classroom, who do you talk to? So I think we can do a better job, and GES is taking steps. I don't know the school you went to. But I, I can tell you, I, the, the, which is what the point I was coming to. Yeah. I went to a, a very low-privileged school. I went to a Sherman Senior High School. Sherman, but there was a counselor, a full -time, an old woman. Yes, and she was you actually living on campus. You were very lucky uh, because now the GES is doing something about it. But in a number of schools, the counselors are not full-time. You see, they are full-time employees. But they do counseling part-time, they teach geography, and they, okay. they going to do this. My opinion is, and GS um, happens to like it, that we need to do something. That if you have in some school, there are about four of them, right? Okay. Why don't you make two dedicated counselors? So that when there's an issue, when a student is looking for them, they can have them. But I also want you to know that in some schools where we haven't had any uh, uh, issues about rampage and, and demonstrations, uh, they, they even have forum where the kids can express their opinions, Deba, where okay. kids can express their opinions. So, so things are not bottled in, right? But even they, in they the Deba, express, they in, get to express in the Ghanaian right. context, in the Ghanaian context where we, mm. we, 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 are, mm. we are brought up to respect adults, respect authority, yeah, when, when there's a Deba, I, I shudder to think uh, of standing in front of everybody and saying, 
this happen this and, and sound like you're challenging you see, authority you see, the thing is, there will still be afraid headmasters who open up themselves to that kind of discussions are the ones who are so progressive and they strengthen uh, the environment for discourse and allow the children to speak their mind because if they don't want the kids to speak they will probably not do it in the first so place. so they are encouraging more of these oh, yes, in the because, schools because at the end of the day uh, I always like how my headmaster dealt with me as a senior prefect. He, he told me, I didn't know he was, I mean, I was a kid. He told me whenever there's good news, you are the student, you are the SP, you are the ones who is going to announce it to the students, right? Mm -hmm. And he did it and did it and did it. And w once or one day, bad news came that I got to communicate it too. Because <laughs> by that time, I had good work with the students, oh, right? Okay. So with that good work, I was able to communicate the bad news. Yes. All that I'm saying is that headmasters, who open themselves up to that kind of communication and allow students to understand that their voices are heard mm -hmm. and it's important that they speak up, always avoid some of these situations. Okay. But in cases where you want to be a dictator and whatever you say is final and you don't want anybody to say anything, then the case also invariably may result to that. But that is not to say that they couldn't also have gone to their district director of education. Mm. And at a worst case, they'll go to the regional director of education, send a delegation. So when your headmaster is not giving you, um, is not hearing your voice, as a student body, um, what you need to do, seek redress with the district director, okay. and they'll be open. Regional director, and even us, now because of social media, I get even calls, because they have my, I get calls from schools. But About two weeks ago, a student called me and said, they are not allowing us to do entertainment. Deputy <laughs> Minister, do something about it for me. I see. And, and they fo he followed up with a WhatsApp message. I was able to call the headmaster, headmaster, be careful. A student has called me. So all that I'm saying that these days, our students can reach any one of us. And therefore, when something is not going well, they shouldn't resort to violence. Contact anybody mm. up the hierarchy and we'll get to it and get to the bottom of it so okay. that they don't destroy school property. Well, hopefully in 2019, we won't get to see any of these uh, hunger strikes and students going on rampage and students destroying school property. Certainly not, because the moment you go on that level, I mean, hunger strike maybe, but <laughs> if you begin destroying school property, that is uh, that is where your, your, your right to freedom some way, somehow ends. Um, but... Let's get to Timpani as a specific example. Mm -hmm. Politics was involved, obviously. I, I, I mean, the, the sad thing is when we politicians overstep our bounds, and when we overstep our bounds and, and uh, create uh, an environment that is not conducive uh, for learning and, and student achievement, it's unfortunate. Why was see, the headmaster goes, goes, uh, suspended? It goes beyond uh, the... To me, it's not even about freedom of speech of any politician. You, you don't, we don't have that freedom to just go and gather children and talk to them. Because, you see, this is the uh, president oh, okay. that needed to end. Okay. And, and it didn't have to be the person who went there. It really didn't. It could have been any person who went there and was talking to students without the permission of the staff without the staff saying, no, this should not be happening here. If I have a child in any school and any adult can walk in there and talk to him, I'll be concerned. Now, there, here, here's where I need to come in because mm -hmm. this incident has been explained. Mm -hmm. The person involved in this incident has said that if you know Timpani school, mm -hmm. it's not like uh, uh, an, Accra, an Accra girls' mm -hmm. school, for example, mm -hmm. where... You have you, you you have to walk through, let's say, a gate. Mm -hmm. He says it's in an open space. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, people drive around. People mm -hmm. walk around all the time. So it was one of those moments where he was just driving, driving around. The people saw the students saw him, and you know they called him, and they. I mean, this has happened in other cases as well. When during the campaigns, I mean, when uh, then candidate uh, Kufado, now president Kufado, was going around, he must have spoke to uh, uh, students. I mean, no, I, I don't know the circumstances surrounding how uh, the president then candidate was uh, speaking to the students, so I can't really delve into that. But as an educationist, I'm concerned about the safety of our children. We've been very fortunate in this country, and that is why. Now we are looking at how do we do fence walls and other things. Exactly. Because you see, if you leave a school and um, that open, like you said, mm -hmm. when anybody can go in, 
we have a challenge. So and that's that what happened in this specific case. The head of the case. school and the staff should be even more vigilant. But, but, okay? but, but why? This guy could have been anybody. Obviously. And he could have told the students to do anything which could have put their lives in danger. So all that the Ghana Education Service was saying was this. To them, it wasn't about who was there. It was about how did we allow that to happen. You have security in the school. You have the headmaster there. You have a housemaster there. The person was not just there for one minute. If anybody can walk into any school and could start talking to the kids, the headmaster, not just him, but he's the figure, he's the head of the institution. We have to then begin to look at okay. how this happened, how do we ensure that it doesn't happen again. And to be very frank with you, as I just said, we have been very fortunate in this country. Well, so and, so and what are the to, processes? Mm -hmm. What are the processes mm -hmm. according to GES rules mm -hmm. to deal with instances like this? Because oh, obviously no, this is not the first time. I mean, time. The, the headmaster was um, asked to step aside so that they could do their investigation. And it wasn't so much about the guy who went there. To me, from an education standpoint, my concern is how is the school managing students' safety to the extent that anybody could go there. And maybe before mm -hmm. this time, a lot of people have gone there and they have just, just got into the news. To, to, to me, the message to headmasters was that you have to be vigilant. If you tell me, your school, let me tell you, I've gone to schools where fence walls have been dumped from the internal generated fans of the school. They do a very good job at that. I've gone to schools where the development levy that the government is paying, which used to be PTA levy, is now being used to build fence wall uh, across the school so that the student could be protected. If you're a headmaster and you have a situation where you cannot use those funds, at least we need to know and be able to support you in that respect. I think that um, it wasn't, to me, it's not so much about the political part of it, but my concern is student safety. And that's why I call on GES to do everything possible to ensure that nobody can just walk into a school campus to do what happened. And, and not just that, not just what the person said, it's all about not allowing anybody for that matter to be able to gather the mm. person's gathering students and no adult saw it, that means we are not vigilant. But, but then again, I think that if we move on from that point, the next point is where the headmaster is. Now, the students went on rampage again because of the headmaster, because at a point they said, look, you can't just suspend our headmaster without us knowing what the roadmap is. That's why I was asking, what are the processes? What is the procedure? What has to be done for the headmaster to take back his position at the school? I think GS is working on that, and I don't want to preempt them. They are the implementers and I want them to be able to come out, and they will come mm -hmm. out publicly and declare uh, to the whole country uh, what they are doing about Timpani. And I, I, the Director General is a, a guy who takes swift action, and I think he's going to take swift action on this, and there will be some communication very soon. Will he be sacked? Oh, no, I can't preempt what GES is doing. I'm sure by now they've I given think, you enough think, briefing that will give I you an they've idea. They've given enough briefing that they've gone through their investigation and, and they'll be coming out very soon because it goes through GES counsel. And he's guilty? Before, uh, I'm telling you, um, they are going through their... Why would, you, why would that prejudice them? Prof. Pokram Mankwai is a, he's a nice guy. He doesn't rush to uh, prosecute or persecute people. I so see. I think at the right time, uh, you hear. Okay. Let's finally talk about sex scandals. Uh, you have, uh, uh, this year, you've spoken about it. I mean, we've heard you speak about it out vehemently. You're opposed to it again. Um, but I am wondering, people are wondering, is this just happening now in this dispensation, or is this something that is just has been in existence but it's just been exposed now? How do you see it from your own preliminary checks? I, uh, let me first of all say that. Uh, to me, it was the lowest uh, in terms of um, the whole year, uh, the lowest point uh, for me uh, was to see trust betrayed in such a fashion, uh, to see adults who are supposed to take care of their children mm. abusing them. Right. And that, to me, was a betrayal of trust. And that is why uh, Ghana Education Service acted swiftly. And that's why I came up publicly to say that perhaps there should be a different way. Mm. And as I speak with you, uh, we are developing a curriculum uh, for, teacher, for training of our teachers. Okay. Uh, 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 UNICEF is very happy about that initiative, and 
uh, they are going to support us. We are just looking for the medium for the delivery okay. of the professional development so that every teacher will be trained. What kind of focus? And sexual harassment okay. so that they will know these are do's and don'ts. Some people will just say that, oh, then um, don't they know? Uh -uh. Even if they know, it, you have to train. Hmm. And we as a ministry should be able to tell the whole world that we've trained our teachers and okay. they know that these are things you don't do. Okay. These are things you don't start uh, to begin with to lead to any other unintended or intended uh, consequence. Right. So all that I want to say is this. We were very disappointed to see what was happening. Fortunately, GS acted swiftly. And now we want them to train the teachers. Okay. And, and begin to understand that this is something that we don't tolerate. So that... It, 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 as for to tolerating this, like you say, people will say, people ha have said that, no, don't, didn't they know, teachers should know that this is intolerable. But again, it's about the sanctions available. It's about uh, what they know the consequences of their actions will be. They know that actually so, uh, you'll be transferred. They know, that, they know that you'll be transferred. And we've seen that happen in this country, where people have been engaged in sexual misconduct or misconduct and have been transferred to another school as if the student there, the girls there, do not deserve any better. No, not this time around. At Yusuman, people were terminated. People were sacked at the Yusuman. So, so, so that era mm. is past. It's gone. Okay. And you asked a question about whether it was going on for a long time and I think the girls are getting bolder, which I comment. The young women uh, who have endured this, uh, sometimes uh, so some past students have endured this, now the young women are emboldened, and I commend them, that now they are not going to sit there for you to abuse them and they won't come out. Okay. And I, I encourage them, wherever it is happening, come out and we'll protect you. And okay. come out and that teacher will not be there with you and, and where there will not be anywhere where, else with anybody of course, else. Of course. They should. So the point I was trying to get to is, first of all, what structures are being put in what, place what? to be preventive mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of these. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was studying in the UK, I did this volunteer program mm -hmm. in a senior high school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Paddington Academy. Mm -hmm. And before that, we had a training. In fact, yes. the training was so compulsory. Yes. And part of the training, you had to understand that you can't be in a room alone with a student. Yes. You can't be, yes, you can't, you, for, and, and, and when you get to the school, at the reception, there is this long uh, uh, sheet that mm. provides, mm. They, they call it child protection uh, uh, rules or something mm. like this, and you, it's a must. You have, have to, to go through it. it. Mm. So there is a structure. Mm. So there are still abuses, yes. In America, we've seen how a gymnasium uh, 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 instructor That's abused several girls, girls mm. and he's in court now. But... There is, still, there is still a system. So it takes, it, it takes an, a, 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 someone who wants to perpetrate this to go the extra mile to breach it. But there is a system. In Ghana, I don't see that system. No, uh, what, what we are doing differently is now that uh, we, are, we are now convening a group. Uh, GS have started with their own internal review. They are proposing some policy changes. At the ministry level, we, we personally, I believe it should be interministerial collaboration, okay. especially between gender and child protection, between the police, for example, between the ministry, between GS, mm. uh, because we need to have a child protection uh, and, and child abuse policy that takes away oversight from GS. Mm. You see, GS should not be policing itself. Right, right. Because then that's be where they get the, they, yeah. they're able to transfer of instead that, of that, removing that, completely. Like in the past, they were able to do that because they were policing themselves. Mm. I think the police should take the lead in investigating the criminal aspect of the allegation. Mm. If the criminal aspect of the allegation somehow does not pan out that there was no criminality, that is where GS policy then comes in. So if GS policy have said that you cannot be with a child alone mm. by yourself, mm. right? just with a child, and you flout that, and there's an allegation that you abused the child. If police investigated and you did not abuse the child, the mere fact that you were there alone with the child makes GS now come in and apply sanctions against you. For going against the rule against of the not rule. being alone no. with a child. Yeah. So, so there should be different layers. As in other jurisdictions, okay. there's a reporting requirement. The reporting requirement is that if you're a teacher and a child comes to you and tells you I've been abused by somebody, 
you don't have to even report to the headmaster to take action. There will be a responsibility on you to then call, in this particular case, maybe gender ministry or it can, it can mm -hmm. be with Dove soon. You call and file a report and you give a copy to the headmaster. So, so, so what it means is this. If you don't report their sanction, criminal sanctions can be prescribed against you. If one day the child goes out and says, I told Miss A that I was being abused and she did nothing, you can even get into You're trouble. You're liable. So, okay. so I, I support your call that there should be a system in place. Mm -hmm. And that system should not be driven or led by Ghana Education Service. It's led by them to the extent that the reporting requirements lie with them. But when it comes to after the reports, they shouldn't be the ones setting up a committee, committee. to investigate like a Jusuma situation and call teachers, call students. No. If there's an element of criminality, it should be with law enforcement. Okay. And then uh, immediately in other jurisdictions, uh, when the report is filed, you are suspended okay. pending investigation. And at the end of the investigation, if you didn't do it, then the service also take a look at you. Did you flout any of our policy? If you didn't, then, of course, you come back and you come and do your work. Okay. So 2019, how is the ministry, education ministry, going to champion this so that I, it's not just, yes, this is a nice idea. This, this sounds terrific. But at the end of the day, no, even I, if it's on paper. I, at the end of the day, this is, this is what I see. Um, this is not something anybody plays with because it can affect my, affect my child, it can affect your child, it's affecting children. And it's not something that we should condone or tolerate. And that is why I like the training okay. idea, coming up with a training uh, uh, policy which mandates that at the beginning of the year everybody gets trained and they sign to indicate that we have been trained and we know these are the do's and don'ts as a starting point. And then the interministerial collaboration will then allow us to look at the legal aspect of this to ensure that people know the consequences will be severe. And I'm not going to lie about the allegation and do everything at the mm. end of the day, get a, a slap on my wrist, and then I get transferred. Mm. No. So is this ministerial, is interministerial mm. uh, thing happening already, or is it now being proposed, or no, we, we did it just come up? No, it, it didn't just come up. Uh, with what has happened, um, what we are asked GES to do is mm. to come up, review their policies. And, and one of the things that we think needs to happen is then when we bring all the actors together and then we begin to streamline how cases are dealt with. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise, I don't think GES should be in the driver's seat okay. on, on when these issues come. Any up. timeline to the implementation of this? I know you're this? going to be calling me very soon, so I'll do my job very well to make sure. <laughs> so at the me, moment, we don't have a timeline. Me, yeah, when you call me in January, I'll be able to tell you this is where we are, and I'll keep on uh, giving you updates uh, okay. as to where we end. We hear you. We'll take a very final word uh, if there's any on your review this year. I mean, you've indicated how good it's been for you, but your review of, honest review of what you've seen this year and what you would do, improve the system upon hindsight with all the learnings that you've had to, uh, with, you've had from experience over, over the months. I, I, I I'll tell you one thing, um, and, and that would be how grateful am I to God and how grateful am I to the president for giving me this opportunity. Um, and, and allowing my minister and, and allowing us to uh, go out and do the work uh, that the people of Ghana pays us to do. And also to thank the media for your support and cooperation. I know that some people are scared of you, but I seem to <laughs> like you guys. I know what is scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's this media guy that I, I called at random to say, how are you doing? It was a Saturday. And he said, you calling me on Saturday? Is there nothing? No, there's no issue. I'm just checking up on you. And he uh, said, I can't believe it. <laughs> because normally when we call me, he said, he don't respond. Right. He's not calling me. Right. So, so I'm very grateful okay. uh, for the uh, media's coverage of our events. And also I'm very grateful to Ghanaians. I, I walk on the street. People come to me and tell me how much they appreciate the fact that I'm, I, I don't probably rant or I, I, I don't make too much noise. I'm calm <laughs> and I take time to explain things to them. Well, good for you. And, and that to me, so there was this woman that I asked, he said, oh, 
Deputy Minister, I love you. You are such a nice person. And I said, you know me, and I don't know you. But you take your time to explain things to us. And I said, I thought politicians are not well loved or really used <laughs> like. Uh -huh. And he said, no, we love you. Oh, wow. So, so the, you. the point is, I, mm. I really thank Ghanaians for giving us the opportunity to come through the TV into their bedrooms and to their living rooms uh, to explain policies uh, to them. And, and I'm also very grateful as the year is coming to a close for the support I got from the minist uh, ministry staff. Especially the chief director who had just gone, Mr. Inokonga, has just gone on retirement. Oh. And he was a workhorse. I mean, when you come to this ministry on Saturday and he's with the team, as a minister, you want to come here. Let's and of see. course, uh, the leadership of our minister, I uh, have other deputy ministers, uh, uh, my uh, sister, uh, Nabo Barbara, uh, I see Asha, see. Uh, for spearheading the TVET uh, side of things, and for Prof. Yanka for tertiary education. All of us have worked collaboratively, and I'm very grateful to God that we came together. And my whole thing is, um, I'll end with this. I, we went to UK, uh, we're walking through Westminster. I saw a lot of uh, statues there. Mm -hmm. And I went to the parliament, there were statues everywhere. And I turned around and told a colleague, I said, I'd rather be African. And he said, why, why should you rather be African? And I said, if I grew up here, one day, a statue will never be erected in my honor. They have enough <laughs> statues. <laughs> yeah, so I want to be African, but in Ghana, history is still being made. Well, if I can work hard enough, I can work hard enough. Maybe one day somebody at least will make me, uh, put me in the appendix or some. Uh, you'll be a statue in their hearts, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> in their but hearts. hopefully, so, uh, hopefully so we'll hope. get to where we want to get. Yeah. I'll take a, a, a new year, you know, end of year or Christmas message, of course, for our viewers, for uh, the teachers, for students, for Ghana. Good. Um, Merry Christmas, and if I, those I'll never get to see, Happy New Year. Uh, to every one of you across the length and breadth of this nation. A new, there's a new dawn in this nation. I believe we have an opportunity to transform this nation under the leadership of Nana Adodanko Ekufuado, uh, whom I want to wish a very Merry Christmas and a, and a Happy New Year for his bold leadership. And um, if we all uh, follow his lead, as ministers, as uh, Ghanaians, um, as workers, uh, to begin to look at the blueprint that he has laid out, uh, we will be able to transform this nation. From the Ministry of Education, we see the transformation happening when um, children from disadvantaged backgrounds uh, get the opportunity uh, to go to secondary school and hopefully to university, we see the transformation happening. So as we move into 2019, I have great hope in our nation. I believe that we'll continue to build systems that can really take us to the intended destination, which is a transformed nation, a developed nation, a nation that can compare itself to any other and begin to see that once we shine the light in Africa, other countries will definitely follow. And one day, the story of Africa uh, will be different from what it is now. And when that story is being written, when history is being written, Ghana will be in, in a position where will be the point of reference for Africa's transformation. And I hope we can say that the transformation began and, and it continued under the able leadership of Nana Adodanko Kufuado. Thank you, Gifty. Okay. And I'm Thank very you. grateful to you uh, you've interviewed me a few times. I've enjoyed your <laughs> interviews. Thank you. The, the, the truth, though, is that I take something away every time. You see, so and I might one day when I write my book... My name will be in your book? be there. Oh, wow. As somebody who gave us ideas for free. And I'll still bring my invoice. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking about Ghana being a point of reference, I think for me personally, we've been a point of reference in many cases. What remains to be seen is how the point of reference is really reflect, reflecting in the lives of the people. Is it making us any better? Are we moving forward? 
for me, that is where the focus should be. It's been an interesting year. Uh, Doc, thank you so much. Uh, he's been consistently available anytime we've called upon him, especially for the polls. He's never uh, disappointed us. He's always there. In fact, we brought him to the studio to answer questions from you, our viewers, <laughs> directly a couple of times. I think we've done it about three or two, two times, and I believe that those answers helped you a lot. That is what uh, this is all about. We're here for you. And so as we go into the next year, we're trusting that it will be a very good year. Just as God has kept us, he will keep us through. And Ghana will shine. My name is Gifty Andropia. Many thanks for your time.